We are on filmsgonewild.com. My name is John Wildman, and we are going to talk about the film Medicine Man, the Stan Brock story. We have with us the director, Paul Michelangeli, and we have Vladimir Daniel, who's a producer on the film. Guys, welcome to the show. Oh, John, thanks so much for having us on. This is so exciting. We're here in London. Yeah, you guys, you, are, are, there, you guys are, are talking all the way from London, which is which I, I love. That is the one thing about um, doing the stuff virtually that you know that, that you, we, we wouldn't necessarily be able to get you guys all the way to San Luis Obispo. Um, but I, the, yeah. because of this, I get to talk to you. This is awesome. It's a great uh, leveler. In some ways, it's a great leveler. It really is. All right, so let's. Uh, we always start off this way. Um, uh, where I have the filmmakers uh, introduce uh, my audience to the film because they have not had a chance to see it as yet. Um, so why don't you take the honors and uh, tell us about Medicine Man real quick. Sure. So it's a real documentary adventure about uh, the life story of a guy who uh, was born in Britain, became a cowboy in Guyana, and then was discovered um, by U.S. wildlife TV producers in the 60s. And um, at that point, his life takes something of a turn and um, he discovers America and later on discovers great, the great healthcare needs that people in America have. And he decides to devote his life to, uh, he's like 45 when this happens and he decides to devote like the rest of his life to the cause of running free pop-up healthcare clinics all across the world and in particular in the United States. So um, part of the film is about the functioning of these clinics, but part of it is about his meandering, colourful life story. What? Spoiler you... alert, there are, there are scenes of some snake wrestling, so I'll tune in just for that. <laughs> exactly. Well, here's the thing, and, and this is, you know, I, I, I was really interested uh, to talk to you guys about this because, you know, this is a film, and, and, I, and I admire, I really admire when documentarians can can pull off a feat like you guys pull off in this film, where this is not simply um, a historical uh, account of you know who Stan was and what he did, um, you know, and it's not even just a, a, a simply a thing of of uh, informing us about the program that, that you know that 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 he you know took on and and made flourish, um, but it's also a call to action documentary as well. And, and so, you know, the fact that you guys are, you know, are juggling each one of these aspects and, and some of them, you know, a call to action documentary sometimes would be at cross purposes with, you know, a, an informational documentary, you know what I mean? Um, so I would love for you um, to talk about, um, and, and I rarely ask this, but it, it, it is definitely pertinent in this conversation, the original inspiration to do it and was the inspiration just oh my god stan had this amazing life or was it um you know the 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 the, the free health care uh, you know project yeah um i think that the original nub of the idea was an inquiry into the life of a man who appeared to be searching for perhaps a family, um, a structure that he'd never really had in his life. I mean, he, as you find out in the film, he has parents and he has a brother, but he doesn't actually spend a lot of his life with his relatives, his actual family. It's kind of only the first 16 years of his life to kind of give that away. Um, well, the perennial so, actually the kind of... <clears throat> yeah. So it was really an inquiry into um, is this man searching for um, something to replace his family, a kind of like proxy family? And I think ultimately the film concludes that he has found his family. I mean, I don't want to go too far in spoiling the film, but he finds his family first in the US and then later he finds his family within this specific cause that he's chosen to um, devote his life to but so but why this so so he was kind of like looking for a, a vehicle to place his affections in his sense of family in but why this particular vehicle well you know you'll have to watch the film and see that something intervenes in his life that really shows him the vulnerability that people have when they're not able to access medical care 
And it's in a different uh, context in the US that occurs to him. But I think later on, he sees this, this parallel and it's, it's shocking to him, actually. Right. Uh, I think, I think John, just, to, just if I just add to that, I think what you've highlighted there as well, it's actually a fundamental challenge of the film like this because we've got to take into account what interests us and what drew us to, towards it. But there's also so many different facets going on, so many different storylines to interweave, which makes it a really challenging edit because it could have gone one of two ways. We could have done a film which was really about Stan and his incredible life and filled two hours with that without really touching on the healthcare. But obviously that's what draws a lot of people to him so actually interweaving all of that into a narrative where you get to learn about Stan and his personal journey you get to learn about the healthcare situation in the US and you also follow the story of this organization's growth um you know it's a really hard thing to do in actual fact so right and it re remind me the name of, of the healthcare pro program remote area medical it's called remote area medical that's it remote area medical I, I just I wanted to be able to say it out loud a few times during this interview to uh uh, to, you know, to, 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 to give them some, some, some love and make, make sure yeah, that- Yeah, absolutely. Um, as, all right, so now uh, I wanna talk about the filmmaking here. And I wanna talk about, um, you know, you know oftentimes, you, oftentimes you fall in one of two approaches on a documentary. Either one, you're just taking the journey and then you, you have footage that you've accumulated, whether it be B-roll or whether it be interviews or whatever, then you're sorting through that to, to write this, the film, or you have an idea of the film that you want to make, and then you're finding footage and finding interviews to put into each slot to uh, to satisfy this timeline that you've kind of you know created. Um, you know, so what was your approach on this film? Well, concerning the clinics that are ongoing in the United States, we wanted to document as many of those as possible um, across like a geographic spread of the United States. So there was a, a fair bit of representation of all different communities. Um, and we didn't have, we, we didn't have a, a very prescribed plan in terms of the narrative we were hoping for there, but we, what we were really hoping for was that the clinics would expand. So they would start to happen in every state of the United States. And that in order to do that, Stan maybe would enact some sort of like legislative change, which allows the clinics to grow. As you'll see in the film, there are restrictions in place legally, which mean that it's harder for RAM to scale up their operation. So we were hoping for like nationwide growth, like possibly with big leg legislative change. But that was kind of very, that, that was very much like wait and see stuff, which is uh, stressful for a documentary filmmaker, you know, who invests all this time and effort. But over on the kind of Stan Brock story side, it was always so clear to me how that should go. You know, <laughs> it's it's just it's a story on a plate. I mean, like we could not have gone wrong. We, we that that there's so much richness, color, diversity, um, it, uh, twists and turns, um, huge like contrast. You know, so so he goes from like living in effectively in the outback in Guyana and not having any social contact and having no exposure. He goes straight to kind of Chicago and is massively exposed. He's on like Sunday night TV, like 30 million viewers. So there's all these lovely contrasts in the story. That story just wrote itself. I, I do have to say, you know, um, uh, you know, as someone who, you know, grew up uh, in the 60s and 70s mm -hmm. and, um, you know, and of course was very, uh, very familiar with Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. And, uh, you know, to the point that, you know, my friends and I would, would you know, had always had the jokes about the fact that, that, um, that Marlon Perkins, uh, in fact, it was rare to see Marlon Perkins actually, you know, taking on an anaconda with, with Stan because, of course, when, when I was watching it, he was like always in the thing, like sending, like, you know, Stan or Jim in there and going, you know, yeah. while, I'm, while I'm comfortably here in the, uh, in the study, you know, stand <laughs> on the, the wild anaconda, right? <laughs> yeah, there's Stan a reason for it. Stan Brock inspires participation, even back in those days. You know, you put that car just in the truck. Nice. <laughs> Same with Ram. You can't just not participate. You've got to fly out to Mexico if Stan tells you, you know? Right. I, I, I love I I that, that, that footage. There's um, a reason why Stan didn't do a second series of, of Wild Kingdom, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Too dangerous to they couldn't afford the insurance. <laughs> it's a really tough gig, the poor guy. It is, it is. It, it's wonderful to see that. You know, and um, 
I, 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 this is a question that, and, and I asked this of, of a documentary yesterday, and I'm going to ask, ask you guys because, again, the, the breadth of, 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 of the subject um, of Medicine Man, and that is that sometimes, you know, you know, as you're filming, when you're doing your interviews, you're getting your footage, or sometimes in the editing bay, you have kind of a eureka moment where you go, this is the film. I thought the film was this, but this moment, this is really, this, I, I, I now see what the film actually is, you know, or, you know, or this, is the, this is the thing that really, I know it's now going to be a film. Uh, can, can, can you guys, and there may be two different points for you, um, but can you talk about your eureka moment in making Medicine Man? Vladimir, do you want to? Well, um, from my perspective, I mean, it was quite clearly defined. I think Paul always had a vision of what he wanted it to be, and it is ultimately what we ended up with. But kind of the point I touched on earlier was it was very, very difficult to implement because we had so much footage, you know, from the archive, for example, because of Sam's, you know, TV career and the films and the various things he'd done, uh, which was great. And you just can't use it all. Um, and then, of course, you've got to marry that up with a modern day story and what we've got there. And we had, we completed a cut essentially uh, with, uh, with Katie Breyer, our first editor, which was a really great um, iteration of the Stan Brock story kind of end to end, but it was a really problematic film because it kind of had this biopic for about 45 minutes. And then it had this, you know, crazy mission to you know, end, end the healthcare crisis in the US and it really just didn't quite marry up. And we had to make a choice then, basically say, do we want to, you know, go ahead with it and hope people get it? Or do we want to, you know, kind of take a risk and really cut this thing up and try and interweave it a lot more where the two storylines kind of diverge and then they converge ultimately where it's like, ah, so that's why he did it. He was actually a quest for belonging. And it was really when we took that risk, the best thing we did was we, we just couldn't decide what to do. Um, we'd sort of run out of money, frankly. And we just did this massive feedback uh, session. We got all of our friends um, and people we thought might be interested in the film. We sent them the cut and a big questionnaire said, can you let us know what you think? And then we kind of collated it into a massive spreadsheet effectively of this percentage of people think that, 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 and that. And ultimately it kind of confirmed what we were thinking that we needed to push the envelope a bit more and go for a for a more nuanced version of the film. And we did that. And that's where Tim Beeston came in, who was uh, essentially our finishing editor, and Douglas Blush, who consulted for us from uh, from LA. And I think that's when it really came together, that final kind of six weeks. And every time we'd get a new cut, it was almost like, wow, it just feels like it's getting closer and closer to that original vision. Um, so I think it's when we made that made that call. That was really, really it for me. Yeah. Well, what about you? I'd agree with that, actually, that the complexity, okay, the fact that we had like kind of three strands going on in this film. So one is the general context of what people are having to deal with, uh, with healthcare in the United States. One is Stan's backstory. One is the kind of ongoing activity of the clinics, like the day in and day out of remote area medical. Um, and that was incredibly challenging to bring together, but keep it compelling and kind of keep it um, emotionally engaging throughout. Because so, you know, like how do you show people rapidly the history of healthcare um, since the Second World War, but kind of keep them with it? Well, you, know, you, you show me in a montage that's hopefully dramatic enough and interesting enough that we cover enough ground and we just make our points. So, um, Vladimir's right to point out that understanding how we could finally approach the edit was absolutely essential. And we, we really um, had to work that over in the process for quite a long time. However, um, to give you a long winded answer, I actually think the water Eureka earlier on when I had set out, I, I studied um, documentary filmmaking like, academically. So I had a sort of a lot of preconceived ideas about how I wanted to do this. And I wanted to do it ultimately in a very direct cinema observational way. And I filmed a couple of times with Stan before I realized that it just wasn't gonna be possible. You can't have a life that's just like multicolored collage 
and then expect to express all of that merely in observational techniques. That's when we open the door to having like formal interviews, using archives, using photos. I mean, I, I, I think we could have gone further with like animation and all sorts of, all sorts of uh, mediums that we didn't, didn't go into. But I think it was understanding that the complexity of this particular man's life means that we can't just go observational. We're going to have to bring in all these other techniques and hope people will kind of like go with us because it is a bit of a um, stylistic mishmash. Right. But we well, like to think it has a flow and it kind of works. I, I think it does work. I think it does work. Um, you know, and again, the, the title of the film is Medicine Man, the Stan Brock story, uh, which you'll also learn about remote area medical um, uh, and, and as well as see some uh, some amazing, uh, like I say, some amazing footage of, um, uh, you know, of, of his past. Uh, when we've been talking with Paul Michael Angeli, the director, and Vladimir Daniel, the producer, uh, Guys, thank you very much for being on the show. It's been nice talking to you. Thanks, Thanks John. John. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much.